Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Thank you for joining this uh, 9th of March. We're going to take a look at the strategy, focus on strategy, looking at the, the currency pairs, the Forex market. And we can also take a look at some instruments, of course, uh, such as gold, for instance, and the stock indices. Before we do that, though, be aware that this uh, webinar is shown to a global audience. It may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at this link, admiralmarketsglobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out more about that and other details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange and global financial markets uh, are consider, or is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. Plus, by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you're aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty, thank you so much. As usual, we want to take a look at the Forex calendar to uh, to take a bit of a look what kind of news events could be around the corner. We got pound industrial production and manufacturing production. Uh, pound news def definitely tends to be volatile, creating uh, some some whipsaws. Uh, perhaps uh, you see an acceleration of price moving often, so that's something to be always cautious of. We got the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. My rule of thumb to that is that if there's an interest rate decision, I don't trade that currency that day. So for me, the CAD is off the table. We can still take a look just for from an analytical point of view, but I'm not going to trade the CAD and that's valid for every currency. Uh, I just don't like uh, trading with that particular currency because price basically doesn't do much. Uh, and when the event is released, when the news, uh, when the n number is known, you get a lot of movement so it's it's quiet before the storm and then when the storm hits it's too wild and i actually don't like that type of uh, environment i'd rather have just a bit of a stable trend uh, and not too much of a variety where price is just not moving and then boom it, it moves you know way kind of almost too much in a way um the same holds true for the kiwi as you can see here is an interest rate decision I expect it to stay the same on two and a half and half percent for today all right you got some other dollar news as well but that seems to be on the lighter side here green and yellow bubbles here or, or dots let's take a look at the heat map i always like to take a look at the volatility what pairs have moved a lot and you can see pound again being the winner but less than yesterday yesterday was all in all a bit of a slower day actually than monday and that's not so typical but did happen cad second and uh, tied third with yen and Aussie dollar again down the list here. The dollar is really not, you know, not one of the bigger movers uh, this year, I would say, uh, as far as I can see. I mean, my judgment from looking at this market heat map day by day. All right, looking at the currency pair specifically, we see CAD here on the higher range, right? We see the yens here at the bottom range. And specifically, pound yen, what a what a mover! Not only uh, a big, relatively big volatility. I mean, relatively right compared to the other pairs yesterday. If you compare this heat map to some other days, you know the volatility is on the lower side, right? But for today, for yesterday's comparison, pound yen did a lot and it moved one percent down. Pound odd also moved a lot up and down, but eventually just closed. Where it opened right no movement zero percent all right we had some slow movers here that aussie uh, and uh probably your pound and your swiss and, and and pairs like that odd new zealand Alrighty, let's take a look at uh, the charts but uh before we do that one last hint about analysis that you can find on admiral markets website wave technical fundamental this is the wave analysis i released Earlier today, looking at the euro dollar, pound dollar, and, uh, and dollar yen. All right, but not, besides that, you got technical and fundamental. If that's more of your of your cup of tea, that's fine. You can find that too, and you can find the trading platforms: MetaTrader for Supreme Edition, WebTrader. All of that is there. All right, let's switch over now to take a look at the live market action. Let me also open the dashboard. See who's writing me. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Vida. Good to see everyone here. All right. As always, feel free to write me a message 
I always love to get feedback about what you're looking at. If you're in a trade or if you have any trade ideas, by all means, or if you want to send a screenshot, one of the best ways uh, to learn is actually making screenshots and so showing it to others. In fact, uh, you know, not many do that. It's uh, a bit of a barrier there. Shyness, perhaps uh, uncertainty or insecurity a bit sometimes uh, prevents us from doing that. But it's uh, it's a great way to put out you know our analysis, our material, and see what others have to say about it. And uh, it also most of the time forces people in general just to be a tad better in their analysis. Because when you're presenting it to someone, you're kind of double checking everything, making sure it looks good. Uh, you know, even more so than if it's just for yourself. So I think that's a great method to force and squeeze the best that you can really get out of yourself. Uh, it's a great way to learn. Not many do it. So um, for whatever reason, I don't know. But I think it's a great way of learning and improving one's uh, outlook on the market. All right. So. With that said, your dollar, uh, the focus today is going to be on price action and moving averages. Now, I, I chose that combination uh, a bit because obviously we, I talk a lot about moving averages and I must be boring some people out there, I guess, with moving averages all the time. Uh, but uh, And there are a lot of price action fans, I know that. And I wanted to kind of combine those two worlds and say, look, you can really actually use both. Uh, to 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 tackle trading, to make analysis, uh, and use both worlds to to one's benefit. So that's was kind of my idea here. But first, let's take a look at the markets. I just want to give my two cents on what I think is happening, and then we'll dive into that topic later on. Okay. Uh, first, your dollar. Uh, basically, price making an inching higher. Now it didn't get to my target. My target was 111. And it went up to 110.60, so it failed really to to you know get substantially close to 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 that level. And well, whatever the reason, I'm not sure. It just died down and, and it started to retrace. And uh, that's why I'll put the fib to the new top. And the reason is is because now it seems like we're going to correct this entire uh, upside. And but I still think that after the retracement is finished wherever that retracement goes, that there could be a bigger zigzag up to that 111. So I don't think that 111 is out of scope. It's impossible to get to. Or even 112, which is the minus 61.8 target. It's just that I think we are seeing a bit of a bigger correction here. Uh, the last couple of four-hour candles, we have already seen that retracement. And then we might see that bigger correction up upwards again. All right, that's my primary expectation. So... Which fib will it be? Which of these fibs will be the turning spot? Now, if I knew that, I guess <laughs> I would be a fortune teller. No one knows. But it could be theoretically any one of those, or it could be multiple of those. We could see a bounce at the 38.2 fib and then a retracement deeper. So we got to be on guard for all of them, in fact. The only thing that cannot happen is price cannot break below this, this bottom because then uh, you know, the analysis is invalidated. And um, something else is going on. We're not getting this, this zigzag, as they call it, to the upside anymore. That that would be invalid. All right. Now, I, from an ABC zigzag point of view, though, I can say that typically the most likely fibs in an ABC zigzag are these three. All right. Now, it does seem to be an ABC zigzag. When I look at other time frames, I, I think that is a pretty decent likelihood. It could be a one, two as well. Uh, in that case, deeper fibs are possible too. So ideally, I think uh, probably these these three seem the most logical, of which I think probably the 61.8 is, is ideal. But let's see if, if price gets there. All right. Now, well, let me take a look together here you can see yes yes there was a bit of a, a doji we already broke yesterday's low so that's why i think we could see a bit of a retracement today back to these fibs and in a bounce moving averages are all cluttered so there's not much of a trend going on 
But if we look at the uh, most recent, we can see that we are back at support. We're getting a bounce at that support. But we also have good momentum here. So there are kind of two uh, contradictory ways of looking at it. One is that we're back at support. Price could make a bit of a rally back here, uh, upwards, sorry, right? The other one would be, okay, we've got momentum here. This is a pullback from more downside. And I think that both could be equally valid. So that's why a couple of levels are important. First of all, as I said, this bottom, right? When we break that, then this momentum is continuing. All right, that's one. Second is if we even get an ABC zigzag up to here, because of this momentum, I think there's a good chance of finding resistance anywhere in here for a turn. So that's another important zone as well. Um, another thing favoring a bounce up is that if you look at this momentum, we've had one, two, three, four. This is the fifth day. So if today or tomorrow don't doesn't break this bottom, that also increases the likelihood of a zigzag. All right. Now, why would I expect resistance up in here, if you're curious? But I have to get rid of this fib first, because otherwise it just gets a bit too cluttered. There we go. Uh, the reason is, is that if you look at these moving averages, you can see a downturn on the weekly. And anytime we try to escape the 21 EMA, we just hit resistance. Also, if you look at the monthly, big wick here. So from that point of view, any upside here could just be retracement and find basically resistance at last month's high. So those are a couple of reasons why I think that an upside is, is likely, but also why the upside is limited and why it could find resistance at those spots. A couple of reasons, at least right there. So if we would put fibs from here to here, and sorry if I repeat too much of yesterday, if you did join yesterday, bear with me. Then there's confluence at these levels, as you can see. All right, so that's another way you can put those fibs like that on both of those swing high swing lows. All right, uh, zooming into perhaps just a, a quick look at the hourly chart. Let's see. You see price is at the long-term moving average here. Could be a bouncing spot, but we know that price can kind of break through it a bit and still res basically respect it, so that doesn't have to be it. 50-minute chart, you can see that it's already bearishly aligned, but that doesn't have to mean any, everything either, but could mean, we have to see, I think, how price will respond around 110. Because if it stops there and turns around, we got a, a chance that price will fall back to the 50 fib, for instance, right? Remember, we had this fib on, right? So if it goes up like this and then gets rejected, there's that chance to fall down and then bounce again, remember? Okay, now, oh, oh sorry, I deleted my own chart. One second, let me pull that back up. There we go. So, but if price actually, and this is why, this is gonna be important, if price breaks, above that 21 EMA on the hourly chart, then starts to make a bit of a bull flag and uses the 21 EMA to bounce back up, well then we're probably not gonna get to that 50. All right? And we're not gonna get up to, uh, we're not gonna get that low. And the 38.2 fit will probably prove to be the, the turning spot. So that's how I'm gonna monitor that. Is it gonna be failure here to break above the 21 EMA? We might see a deeper correction. If it's going to succeed in breaking and then stay above it and then use it as support, well, then we're probably not going to go that low and we're going to bounce off the 38.25. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. In the meantime, I'm going to look at the pound USD. And... Uh, I'm going to take a look at Beverly's comment. It looks great when uh, taking a look at the dollar yen. Uh, Beverly was looking, has been looking at taking trades based on yen strength. So we're going to take a look at that very soon. Pound USD retracing all the way to the long term moving average 144, 169 EMA close. Peaked a bit above it, right? But that, remember, this is a zone, not a 100% distinct level that it always will stop right there. 
right? It's, it, it can poke through it a bit, still respect it. Now you see, look at the 21 EMA going all the way back to 144. So it's been a sturdy pull up, right? And from that point of view, when the 8 EMA turned here, uh, actually going short against this strong 21 EMA like that is, is in itself a reversal. So both up and downside, ironically, uh, have reversal kind of ideas uh, or are, no, I should say differently, are in a way a bit of reversal uh, character. Because yes, the bigger, down, the bigger trend is down, but shorting it against such a momentum on the four-hour chart is also a bit of uh, a counter trend because the four-hour chart is showing that you know this is this is a pretty sturdy uptrend channel at the moment. So that's why yesterday I was saying uh, I would like to see price break below the 21 EMA, which it hasn't done yet. It hasn't done that yet. Right? I want to see below. But we also would like to see this master candle, which is really dominating the scene here. I'd like to see that low being broken. And then I had a concept that he mentioned master candle had to break the high within, or uh, if it's a bullish one, I think, you know, it has to break the high then, of course, within four to five candles. Well, it hasn't done that. So that trade idea would be deleted. But still would like to see that low broken. Would still like to see price push below the 21 EMA and then a pullback and continue. This is still my main kind of thing I'm looking for for downside. But um, was it at a strong resistance level? Yes, so there is always a potential for taking pending orders somewhere in here and putting the stop loss perhaps above this top. I'm not a big fan of those trades, but yes, it was in, and it is still at a strong resistance. Now, the other thing I was looking for was engulfing twin, basically breaking last Monday or this Monday's low, right? Didn't do that either. The ADMA is still bullish on the daily. When the ADMA turns and you get something like that, well then, then we know that this is, you know, this is probably turning, and there's a good chance to retest this bottom at least. And then we'll have to see that bottom is still important, and doesn't, you know, the, the downside momentum does not have to break necessarily this bottom, but we do have then a likelihood that it can continue to test it at least, and then we'll have to see how price will respond to that support level. Okay, hourly chart. What does that all mean? Uh, hourly at the moment is is quite uh, ch corrective and, and choppy. It looks like it's in a triangle. I would not take this break to the upside, uh, nor to the downside, but it does give me an idea of what could happen when the price starts to poke through this this trend line. So basically, what I need, to, if you look at this, this is bullishly aligned. So what I need to see is this, and then I hook back to the 21 EMA like that, which goes like this, and then continue. Now, some, of, some traders might not like that, but this this is just waiting, basically. This is saying, okay, currency pair, I, I'm going to monitor you. This is what you need to do, and then I'm getting interested. In. And uh, that's fine. If you have a plan like that, plan to trade, and then trade that plan. Many times, traders don't have a plan, or if they do, they abandon it and do something else. And that leads to a lot of inconsistencies. That's always a bit of a problem. Whatever the plan is, make sure that you can follow the plan and make sure that you think it makes sense and, and, and you know you have patience for that. And every every trader has different levels of patience. Not everyone has patience in general is pretty good, but some of us are going to have more of it and others are going to have less of it, right? So if if you can try to analyze yourself and see whether you're on that higher you know range or in a lower range. And try to find a strategy that is, is matches that level of patience. If you have more patience, then probably swing trading could be more appealing to you. It suits you probably a bit better in general. If you're less patient, then maybe lower time frames is more suitable or, or easier for you to to handle and, and trade. Rough, roughly speaking, right? Right now. So that would be the breakdown set. Break upside, I'm telling you, I'm not really liking it. I know that it's possible. We've got a triangle here. But for me, price is still at the 21 EMA. And 
for me really to get interested in the upside, I need to see a candle like this on the daily today. I would need to see a couple of four hour candles above the 21 EMA, then tomorrow, let it go back to that 21 EMA and then look for a bounce. So basically what I really need to see is price getting away from this zone. That very simply put, I don't like price in this zone. 21, 144 EMA are right above each other. So that's the disappointing news for, for pound. Uh, dollar yen. Yeah, it's a tight triangle too. Sorry, I missed the uh, Beverly's words there. Yeah, it is indeed. And especially with the EMAs on top of each other. Definitely. Let's see. Two, two bearish candles are both inside candles at the blue fractal candle. Let's see. Which time frame was that, Beverly? When you said the two bearish candles was that? Oh, you mean this one? Yes. We got the uh, master candle here. Oh, daily. Uh huh. Yep. This is uh, a break of this low is would be very very useful because for downside. Otherwise, this is still indeed it's bearish, but it's still within the range of uh, of Monday. Although yesterday's candle probably to me. Signaling there's a good chance that we'll get that break today, I think. But I would like to see that happen, as I as I mentioned. So it makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar yen. There was a new chart, the one with dots. The one with dots that you just saw, by the way, uh, is was basically a chart I used for Pro Learning Lab webinar. I can show it to you again in a second. All right, let's take a look at the yen. Uh, let's see, Beverly went short on odd yen, euro yen, and pound yen. Okay. If you're looking for screenshots, well, you can use a program called Snagit, or uh, what is this thing that I have here? Let's see, let me open that. Oh, it's in check. <laughs> I don't know, it's a circle with a knife. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what, the, what the program is, unfortunately. Um, I think you have Screencast as well. Screencast.com, I think, and Snagit. Those are the two I know in this, this program. I don't know the name of that, though. Um, dollar Yen. Had been continuing lower. I said yesterday that I shorted it here, right? And that I moved the stop loss. Uh, to break even, and when this candle formed, I'm not remember if that was live in our room or not, but I moved it to above here when this candle formed. Why is that? <clears throat> That's a bit of a the topic I wanted to, to dive in today. Price action and and moving averages. Moving averages were bearish. You can see that price uh, clearly moving away from the 21 EMA with a candle like that. The moving averages growing away from each other. And a candle like that really represents strength, a breakout, and a push below the 21 EMA. I, in those cases, do not expect the high to get broken. So I move the stop loss above it, lock in some profit. I think that's an excellent candlestick to to use for such a for such a trail stop, or for an entry, or for a break. And actually, I think yesterday price was about here, and I said, well, this this retracement was pretty nice as well. So price has moved down a bit lower since then. Uh, and using candles like this typically are very good. Not every candle is good for drill stop, but these these dominant ones that show clear intent are typically very good. I think that this one is also pretty good. So let me see where I have the trail at the moment. Uh, let's see. 113.03. Oh, yeah, that is above this four-hour candle. That's where I have it now, above this four-hour candle, One thing. 113.03. So I have the stop loss right above here. Now, that is a bit risky, I have to admit. It could be better to keep it up in here, just in case it gets back to the 21 EMA and then turns. But that's okay. I, there's always a chance of re-entering, even if it hits it, and then it does reject off the 21 EMA, you know, then 
then there's always a chance to to re-enter. So, all right. So yes, we're getting into an impulsive part below the 21 EMA on the four-hour chart. So that looks good. Let's take a look at the one-hour chart here. Everything is aligned here as well to the downside. Price below moving averages, short term, short below long. And uh, it looks like we had a turn right about here. That could have been a one hour entry, right? Because price, the 8 EMA and price re rejecting at the 21 EMA, 8 EMA turning as well from, from bullish to bearish. That could have been the entry candle right there. If that one was missed, the few hours ago then the alternative would be to zoom in a time frame lower let's see got a bit of a double bottom here Let me get rid of this this line and this line. Let's see what kind of space we have today. Let's see, where should I put the fib? It's a bit clustery here. All right, let's put it on here to here for the moment. All right, let's see how much of acceleration we can get. If we can get down to 111, for instance, today, or 111.60. All right, let's go back to that 50 minute chart. All right, I think that uh, from this angle, probably the one hour setup was good, but the 50 minute is a bit difficult because there's a single, which means that if we break this bottom, we'll get double divergence. So from that point of view, I think it could be wiser to, let's see, let's move this uh, fib from here to here. Let's see, let me go to the one hour chart because if we hit the minus 68 point target, I would move the fib from here to 111.60. All right, there we go. No, that was a bit too much. I think the target was 112, right? Yeah. All right, so we would see a fall down to there, and then we'll probably have to see a pullback to the 50 fib or the 38.2 fib for a further downside. So from my point of view, I still think waiting for a renewed move back to the hourly uh, 21 EMA is better. Like it did here, that was a good signal uh, with the target at 112, 111.60. I think that that would probably be, unless maybe a five minute chart, maybe there's enough space because the lower, of course, we go, the the bigger this, this distance becomes. Let's take a look. Let me get rid of this fit, by the way. All right, five minute chart looks a bit like a descending wedge. Well, we know that the price has, you know, has space to 112, 111, 60, then 111. So if it, if it breaks this bottom and then pulls back to that five EMA, 21, five minute chart, 21 EMA, and then continues, uh, that might make sense on a five minute chart, All right? Because then I know that sounds funny, but on a five minute chart, you know, 40, 40 pips, Another 40 pips, uh, another 60. Those are bigger zones. So now the chart that is quite tight to to work with. All right, uh, Beverly mentioned the uh, shorts on euro yen, pound yen, and those probably are doing well. We got uh, yesterday uh, continuation of the downside on Monday, Tuesday. One, two, three, four, five, six candles that didn't break this top. And after that six candle, it started to fall nicely, 230 pips already since that moment. And price is now indeed starting to break not only this master candle here, 
right there, that low, but also trying to break below the 21 EMA. So this could be the first phase of a break to the downside. We'll get a probably a pullback and continuation. So the continuation part is interesting. I talked about that yesterday. But uh, there is a potential the price could fall a sturdy amount before it gets back to that 21 EMA. So um, it might be worth trying to trade that zone before it pulls back. Let me take a look at the lower time frames. This is a bit choppy. Just looking at this price action, that, that does not really inspire so much. It would maybe be good to see price make just a tad of retracement and, and a turn so that we kind of get that potential retracement out of the way. Because that's kind of lingering, um, kind of lingering in the background here, that potential there. So I think that could be good on the hourly chart. See that 8 EMA twist up and then back down again. Beverly took a short bound yen from 160.57. That's uh, up in here somewhere. Nice. So in that case, I think moving it to break even would make sense, personally. Uh, because... Uh, it's about 30 pips above this 21 EMA. Seems like a decent margin to me. Just my two cents. All right, so that's my idea on the pound yen hourly. Euro yen is also breaking below yesterday, this week. Made that zigzag and indeed falling as we're talking about zigzag and then you know, finding resistance and moving back low. Ideally, we get the pullback and continuation. That is the best setup, I think, still. Here, two, one, two, three, four, five, six candles are breaking that high. My time factor rule would then indicate that this could be weakness. If you wait for the 8 EMA to turn, that would be this candle or this candle. If you wait for the break of the 21 EMA, that would be this candle. And now price is running away from the 21 EMA. Now that could you know, still be a few candles. It doesn't have to go back to the 21 EMA right now. Same like the pound yen. could fall a bit and then make a bit of retracement. And who knows how far it can fall. It could fall uh, more than, you know, this could run up to 15 candles down and then it retraces back. So not to be necessarily underestimated how far it could, it could go. Now on our early chart, we don't have any pullback to the 21 EMA, so I think ideally, no divergence. Price makes that pullback to the 21 EMA too. That would be, I think, a, a good short for one more push, and then we might get the four-hour retracement. Any questions? By all means, let me know. What I, uh, if you, if you have any follow-up or, or you know, details you would like to ask, but this is what I would be looking for under Yuri and Pauline. I think that they look good for downside continuation when they get back to the 21 EMA. Uh, great job, You're the entry for Beverly, 123.95. Great job, Beverly. And let's see. That might be just a bit early for break even, but I think moving it above, let's see, above 124.10, Right, that's this. This is why. Why is that? Is because I'm using this, this four-hour candle. Right, that's a strong candle. It's a good, good, good candle high. Not a good candle high. Sorry, a good candle close. Excuse me. Um, dominant candle, I would say, pretty dominant at least. Not as great maybe as this one. What is the difference between this one and this one? Well, the first one. Oh, the first one here, right, compared to the second. Well, the first one is bigger in size, and the close is near the low, closer to the low. The second one is a tad off, but uh, detail. It's still pretty strong. 
All right. Um, so I think that stop loss above this would, would make a lot of sense. We got that that level. You're not only above a fractal on the hourly, but you're above two fractals. Anyone who maybe read a bit of material from Bill Williams uh, probably bumped into that eventually that he likes to use two fractals as a trail to give a bit of space. Alrighty. So, but for those that are not in it, uh, a pull back to the 21 EMA and then the turn similar, just to give you an example of what I mean, similar for instance to uh, basically, well, these didn't price didn't move enough from the 21 EMA, but so I cannot give an example there, but okay, let's, just just for for you know reference here the 8 EMA turn back up right well here it should have actually two two spots and then 8 EMA turn back down right there All right so uh, those would be kind of the things I'm looking for price back to the 21 EMA etc pull back basically All right, to finish the yen story, let's take a look at odd yen. It's not one that um, I looked so far today, but price getting very close to the minus 61.8 target. We had basically this as a swing high, swing low, this as a channel, and indeed price making the move up, stopping shortly at the 272 target, and then very close to hitting the, the main target. Now, hourly, it looks a bit corrective. Daily, it actually looks like we're back at resistance. Four-hour chart, you can see it's bullishly aligned, but price trying to break below the 21 EMA. Problem is that this is the first attempt, so we'll probably see a bit of a trace before the potential second dip. So I'm not, I would be a bit cautious with the odd yen downside because of the fact that it's bullish field land. All right, let's take a look at some other pairs. And, and um, Beverly had an interesting comment ago just a few minutes ago. Patience takes a lot of work. It does not come naturally when applied to trading. I think that's 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 very true. I think that for every every one of us, patience in trading is is not not something that uh, is easy to create. But I do think that some of us have more natural patience in our character, and it will probably be a bit easier for those traders to get to that point than others. Uh, but yeah, in general, definitely not not an easy thing, uh, just because of the of the market movements and, and the nervousness that that's connected to that. Definitely, uh, this is the odd use the four hour chart, and you can see price finally getting back to that twenty one EMA I talked about yesterday, and this could be the candle that the eight EMA turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I think that uh, it might be a good breakout tomorrow. Let me see where that target was again. Seventy five and then seventy six sixty. All right, let me say it this way. Uh, the four hour chart looks like it's ready when it closes like this and the eight EMA turns up, it, it could be ready for along with the stop loss below these bottoms and a target at 7660, for instance. Alternatively, if 
you know, if, if a bit more confirmation is, uh, is, I mean, how to, how to formulate that, if that could be a setup, but I might opt for a bit more confirmation, which means that I would look for an hourly chart here, and I would like to see five to six hourly candles keep above it, then make a slight little bull flag, and then look for a long. All right, every time basically price has dipped below this uh, 21 EMA, it kind of struggles to get back above it. Take a look at this upside here. You can see, you can see, for instance, that here the retracements were pretty shallow. They stopped, or let me, let me use a different color here. Let me use orange. You can see price stopped at the 21 EMA. Stopped at the 21 EMA. It didn't kind of break below it. And in this zone, in this zone right here, it didn't even go back to the 21 anyway. It was that impulsive, right? Compare that now with these dips. This was a break below it, and this was a break below it. Now, the good news for upside is that we had one and two, and the second really didn't make it too far. So that means that a, a three-wave correction could have occurred. One, two, three. And then this is ready for the for the breakout. So whenever price dips below the 21 EMA significantly, the first time it tries to break above it, it's always a bit of a warning that you can get this first. So from that point of view, this could be ready for the breakout. So the four-hour chart, you know, from that point of view, also once again, <laughs> makes uh, some some good sense. Uh, an additional way to look at it would be a couple of one-hour candles above it, and then a hook back to that 21 EMA and a bounce. Let's take a look at the 15-minute chart. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fifty minute chart too. <clears throat> if it makes a couple of good candles here and the 21 EMA starts to catch up and then price hits it and bounces, same story, I think. <clears throat> so looking good for, for upside. QE less so because it's at resistance. To me, the CADs are not interesting because there's so much divergence. All right, the Aussies. I said there's divergence, but uh, Price is not really making a, a bit, not really making a major rebound or zigzag. It's just kind of respecting the 21 EMA going sideways. And your odd divergence was a bit questionable, in fact, already. So from that point of view, actually, these two might not make much of an upside. And they could make one more push lower before perhaps getting that retracement. So I, I don't know. I think that there seems to be other, better ideas to trade than, than pound out your odd, in my opinion. Considering the divergence, but also the fact that price is not really reacting to that so strongly. So doesn't look that great to me. Uh, Roger mentioned dollar. Uh, and versus the uh, Singapore dollar here. Um, and I'm not sure if I don't look at that one regularly here. Mm -mm -mm, let me see if I can. Ah, there it is. Good. Already weekly chart very very bearish uh, because we're breaking through this support line right there. Oh, there we go. Uh, bearish candle last week as well. And if we put a fib on here to here. 
targets at uh, these two fibs. Seems to be a bit of a pullback at the moment. But that looks like to be of, of an ABC zigzag. Let me put on the moving averages here. Price going back to the to the 21 uh, EMA on the four hour chart, and considering the strength of this move down on the hourly chart, look at that impulse. I agree that this is uh, a decent probability of continuing lower. Yeah, I think that uh, makes a lot of sense. Price <clears throat> really making a, a big sprint here to the downside, correcting all the way up to the 21 EMA, but not really breaking above it. That's good. Price hitting the 21 EMA, but not really pushing uh, with candles higher than that. So as soon as this 8 EMA turns, which could be with this candle, or breaks below this fractal uh, candle, or breaks below the 21 EMA, I think all of those reasons could lead, or could be a way to approach a further continuation lower. I think that makes a lot of sense, in my view. <laughs> All right. Any other pairs that you might want to take a look at? Or time frames? Is there a particular combination you might find interesting? Price still struggling around that 61.8 fib, nothing really happening from that point of view. Nothing new. We looked at this yesterday. These are long-term charts. Dollar index support, found support at this trend line. Dollar really moving slow. I mean, relatively compared to the pound. Pound is really a, always a big mover, but keeps that track record intact. Dollar been on the slower side, right, this year. Last year, big movement. This year, you can just see it kind of bouncing at the support, bouncing at this resistance, and it's it's stuck in this wedge. It does look like an ascending wedge, but as soon as it breaks one of these trend lines, then price of the dollar specifically could uh, probably accelerate a bit, right? But before that happens, it might be a bit of a slower dance here. It could be a bit of a slower movement. Cat, Swiss C, long. Let's take a look at that. I don't even have the cats with see, I think, open. Maybe I do. I don't want to f waste too much time looking for it. As I open the cats with see, we got another idea. We to look at New Zealand yen. And Beverly saying that, let's see, the main idea for her is pound weakness and yen strength. Yeah, and I think that, that makes a lot of sense. This is this is, this is is that uh, chart that you just saw, by the way. And it has the Tenkin, Kiyun, and Parabolic on it. tries to basically look for a trend with the tenkin below the kiyun or the, or above it you know that would be tenkin below the kiyun would be downtrend the black one below the, the purple one here the line other way around it would be an uptrend right this black line above the purple line would be uptrend and as soon as there's a trend then we're looking for the parabolic to switch as a pullback here we got a downtrend right so when the parabolic switches that would be the pullback and then re-switches, that would be the continuation. 
right here. That's something we discussed last week. Let's see. Let me find the cat swissy again. There we go. All righty. A dash of divergence, perhaps weak, but possible. Daily chart is above the, the tunnel, but that's still in the danger zone, I would say. Weekly chart, just a tad above the 21 EMA, but that's also a bit of a danger zone. So I see a bit of a risk to the upside on when I look at these time frames. Yesterday was bearish, 78.6 FIB close by as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm less enthusiastic about upside here, personally, because of these factors. Yeah, I think that's about it. I'm just checking if, if there's any angle that could give us a a tad more clarity perhaps, but I would say double divergence maybe already on the hourly as well. And the singles, oh, we did reach the, the, the long term, so that's okay. But yeah, I think uh, it could go up. I'm not saying you never know, but I don't think it's worth it. Let me say it this way. All right. That's Let's take a look at New Zealand then. That was the next one mentioned by Beverly. Let's take a look at that one. There we go. Could be a retracement of last month's candle. There's a, a bit of a space now between the 21 and 144. And that's indicating maybe the reversal because prior to that, 21 was above 144. Then we had them equal to each other. And now the 21 is trying to pull away. Uh, daily charts. You can see that's a bit of a different story because... Price has actually been uh, below that already for quite a while. All right, looks like a bit of an ascending wedge with or a triangle. Roughly, maybe not the best triangle ever, but. Alrighty, it looks like uh, definitely a good momentum here starting to, to unfold to the downside after a zigzag up. And uh, I would say ultimately it probably looks bearish indeed, like the other yens. The price did not manage to break above the 21 EMA here on the daily chart. We did have a very bearish day yesterday, and it broke that low. That yesterday's candle did turn the 8 EMA back down. <clears throat> so from that point of view, I think that it looks more like a bearish environment on the daily because the 21 is below the 144, and this upside could have been a retracement. Mm -hmm. So that looks like a daily candle setup to downside. Now, from a four-hour point of view, we probably would like to 
price to go back to 21 EMA and then see a turnaround there. And that would be a setup on a four hour chart. But on the daily, it looks pretty good, I would say. Now, will it break this bottom? Who knows? Let's see. But uh, it does look like it's positioning itself for that. All right. Great. Most welcome. I gladly take a look at these because... Uh, there are a lot of currency pairs, so I think that uh, we would eventually run out of time if we, we looked at them, So all of them. So love love to uh, hear your favorites. I think that, uh, yeah, as I said, New Zealand uh, today and CADO today are, for me, off the table because of those interest rates, though. So that's something to – well, maybe, I mean, if, if one were to trade the daily chart, I'm not sure. Um, I don't typically – take these kind of daily entries and more look at lower time frames like four and one hour but uh, so that's maybe something to consider but could still be better to wait after today now that's the cad in the new zealand once again um regarding pound wanted to take a look at one pound on let's take a look at pound new zealand probably considering what Beverly also said was the pound yen, pound strength, weakness, yen strength. Might be the better one today. And it's making a bit of a retracement here as we speak. So let's see if we get the retracement and then a turnaround again. Regarding the pound New Zealand, weekly back to long term moving averages. Daily chart, there's a tad of divergence. So the pound weakness is not that great uh, on this pair, I think. Pretty messy on the four hour chart. I think there's not really the, there's too many time frames that don't really seem interesting to me. The weekly downtrend, but at bouncing spot, daily slightly divergence, four hour. Oh, this is now I'm confused. Let's see, four hour chart. Oh, this is the hourly chart that looks so messy. Okay, sorry. The four hour chart looks different. Okay, four hour chart is well, it would have to. I mean, looking at the daily, there's still a good chance it can get to this long to moving average here. Uh, four hour had a pretty good momentum. There's no divergence on the four hour chart. So there could be a bit of a, still probably maybe one more push lower. It's possible. If it breaks, maybe this trend line, there could be uh, a bit of a break, and then we get the bigger retracement. But it doesn't look that great. All right, regarding the price action and, uh, and the moving averages I talked about or wanted to talk about today, as I mentioned earlier, I think that moving averages are just a, a great way of looking at uh, a trend pullback, and I think price action is a great way of... of understanding bounce break continuation. So I think it's a, it's a good mix because for instance, with the dollar yen, just to give you an example here, the dollar yen, there we go. You know, a candle like this gives a lot of information about how prices, is, is price moving away? Is price continuing away from this, these moving averages? And gives us a lot of information on how to 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 basically get the confirmation because 
moving averages are a great indication, but you know it's a rough area, and there's so many different uh, ways, and and you know there are so many different levels where price can can turn or bounce or break. So it's a, it's a great heads up, but price action is kind of like the definite, or maybe not the definite, but it's is the the deal closer when you say, okay, this is this is it. This is where we get the reversal. Or this is where we get the continuation. So, for instance, you know, a lot of examples we can just use when looking at this chart alone. Let me get rid of this fib. How price action, for instance, the one I just mentioned here, how that was a breakout, right? Um, how this strong candle like this could could be, of course, it's easy to say in retrospect, right? Now we see that it retraced, but it could be uh, a warning. Hey, this is maybe going to correct deeper off of double bottom. Yes. Or here, look at this engulfing twin. could be a warning that the downtrend is over or bearish momentum. A doji here, followed by a bearish candle, could be a warning that the retracement is over. A strong candle below the 21 EMA could be a, a signal that, hey, this downtrend is continuing it. And here too. A bearish candle at the 144 EMA, right? Could be another uh, warning that uh, that retracement is finished. So this is how you can use a couple of, you use these candlestick patterns and candles themselves for information regarding how prices is, is price responding to those moving averages and how you're engulfing twins at the 21 EMA. All right, so this is this is what I wanted to to basically show. Uh, so it's it's not very complicated. How you how you can basically use just classical price action candlesticks candlestick patterns uh, and use that in combination with moving averages to to say okay at moving averages or upon the break of them use those candlesticks as a confirmation of whatever I was anticipating. Yes, Beverly has a very good way of formulating it. Maybe, uh, yeah, actually a lot better than I can. The moving averages form the base around which to look at price action. So uh, basically they're indicating the zone when price action has probably more meaning. If we only look at patterns, then we might be kind of tricked or we might be looking at patterns that are less relevant, less important perhaps on average. I'm not sure if that's true, but there, you know, there could be patterns that are in areas that might be not that significant, at least according to my analysis when using moving averages. So moving averages kind of dictate when those patterns, when the candlesticks become more interesting. Exactly, that's very good formulated. Thanks, Beverly. So that that's basically how you can use those moving averages also to have an idea, okay, this is the zone where I think it's interesting. That's why price action is more important. So maybe one more example, because this is really the main the main kind of idea. And there's really not much, much to add. So maybe looking at examples is, is better. Um, does that, let me ask you, do you have a particular particular currency pair you would like to look at. Mention, give me one pair. This is also a bit more relevant. I mean, it's not totally unusable on the lower time frames. Sure, the same principles can be used. You want to be maybe a bit more careful with a 15-minute chart, right, about interpreting price action like that. Perhaps you would like to have two two signals, uh, get more, more of a confluence. All right, any any currency pair. Well, 
what Beverly it looks like, it will be up to you. <laughs> Looking for one currency pair. Anyone? Ah, pounds was it? Okay, good. Uh, Beverly says there's a storm. There's lightning. I, 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 I. Well, hang in there. Uh, let's see. Judy says New Zealand, and Neil says you're odd. So let's take a look at both those then. New Zealand, USD. All right. Now, let's zoom in here so we can see that pretty good. All right. So here, for instance, uh, let's take a look at the very beginning. Let's get rid of this trend line here. Good. All right, so price gets back into the long-term moving average, right? So there could be a bit of a bounce. So um, looking for a, a candle that could confirm that might make sense. Now, I don't think there are a lot of great signals. There are a couple of bullish candles here that might be a reason. I don't see much in that particular zone. But a break above it with a good four-hour candle like that certainly uh, makes sense as a breakout, right? So that could have been one way of tackling it. An entry there, stop loss below the candle low or, or below the fractal, right? That could be a serious breakout right there. And when does that, does that upside end? Well, looking at price action, we might say, for instance, uh, ultimately a doji, a couple of dojis here that could be already a warning. A break of this this strong candle, the break of that low, a bearish candle to the opposite side, right? Failure to break this high within five, six candles. Those could be all particular reasons to say, okay, that momentum is over. And uh, price is, is failing. So that could be reason to take profit. Now, I don't see any reasons necessarily to look for a, a short as well, uh, a reversal trade based on that, but it could be. But it's not very uh, evident. I think it's more like a a profit grabbing uh, idea based on the breakout here. Now, for the moment, this is a retracement, dipping below the 21 EMA. Typically, that does see a bit of a bounce. Still, first of all, so there's no divergence between these tops, particularly. So, in fact, if price breaks above the 21 EMA, it could be a breakout to the upside. If we look at earlier moments, this could be a breakout, right? There was pin bars here at the long to moving average. Uh, there were a couple of bearish candles here that indicated that, you know, perhaps that is over this break of this candle low as well. That's that strong candle, the master candle. Uh, it's always like this. It's when it gets choppy like that and the moving averages are so close to each other. There's also a zone where you might want to be a bit more cautious with the reading price action signal signals in general. But we do have engulfing twins here at the long-term moving average. What else can we read? We have a wick here that could show exhaustion might be a way to, to, to look for profit taking, right? Not for reversal trading. And the reason is that price didn't exceed the 21 EMA that much. So the thing is that I wouldn't consider this a short signal or a reversal signal because yes, we're in uptrend, but price has hardly exceeded in pulling away from that. So it's, a, it's I think, a bit risky uh, in that regard. It's possible, it's possible, right? Especially if you see another failure here and we did get a bit of retracement. So anytime price gets to a 21 or 144, you know, those are reasons to be a bit more alert. Or if it's accelerated away from the 21 EMA for a while, right? Here could be profit taking. 
uh, this exhaustion when we're tracing back Doji, tracing back to the 21 EMA. And here, failure to break below it. Potential reversal. Engulfing twins, failure to break below it. But those are a bit riskier and more difficult, definitely. All right, so those are just ideas how you can combine that. Now, it's not always ideal, and not always will we get information. I don't think here there's a particular candlestick price action signal. We have just a very simple bearish candle here. And that was enough. Not necessarily very fancy, but the downside did continue. All right, so that's just kind of the idea, concept that I wanted to um, introduce to you. Of course, take a look if you like. On your own charge, do a lot of testing on demo, on paper, without risk first to get a feel if it's something that you think could be for you or not. Make sure that whatever uh, you know you, you test, that you have full kind of clarity and ownership of that idea before uh, taking uh, any smaller risk. You know you want to demo test and, and really thoroughly command uh, within a risk-free environment before doing any of that. Okay. So yes, the recordings there are recordings made, and but unfortunately the last couple of two weeks. The recordings have not been released on YouTube. There is a bit of a problem with the, the decoding, unfortunately. So I hope to get that solved. Uh, so I'm not sure if it will be solved today, but uh, eventually these, these will be released and they will be put on uh, YouTube. And you can find that at Ivan Markets' YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, go to Ivan Markets, and you'll find Ivan Markets there. Tonight, no, tomorrow we have leverage and feedback cycle, two kind of mini topics in one. And next week we got the same lineup for our webinars but be aware though that uh, we have tuesday pro learning lab no we don't it's on thursday no tuesday nanit has his expert opinion sorry instead of wednesday all right so hope to see you tomorrow wish you all great trading and uh wish you also a good week cheers